Welcome to a recap of today's open source hangout. Today, we've been working on the companionship care app and added a new feature, sort of a, you could call it an anti feature almost, but it's a restriction um, that only allows a person to create one uh, caring circle. Uh, the companionship care app is designed to promote companionship and help encourage people to become involved in the life of a friend or a loved one who might need a little bit of assistance in their daily activities. These can be activities like going to doctor's appointments or housework or even leisurely activities like going on an outing or spending time in nature. You can create a caring circle, care circle, invite some companions and divide up activities with the person who is in the center of the circle. This app is now published online. It's running at app.companionship.care. So feel free to check it out. Currently, the app allows you to create multiple companionship or care circles. And as a precaution and as a preparation to try to encourage um, kind of stewardship or sponsorship of the project, I've restricted the number of care circles you can create to one. Uh, firstly, it involves a little bit of resources. You know, we store an image, which is not that much, but then we transfer that image uh, every time the page is loaded. Uh, also, those images are just, you know, accessible, so you can hyperlink to them. And it could set us up for abuse. I don't know the likelihood of that. We don't want to be a media repository and certainly uh, wouldn't want to have to start uh, monitoring uh, image uploads and things like that, which might have to happen in, uh, in any case. Uh, we do like this feature that makes it more personal when you see a picture of the person uh, whose uh, care you're coordinating. So in any case, uh, I think it's a reasonable um, constraint to only be able to add one caring circle. And at a few, uh, in future work, I'm hoping to also um, offer us um, what I would call an affordable subscription tier something like two to four dollars or euros a month to enable a couple of extra features and support the ongoing development and maintenance of this project. And that'll be some kind of features like adding additional companions, having email alerts, um, maybe iCal support so you can integrate these events into your calendar, which would naturally be more resource intensive and justify an additional cost, not only for the server resources, but also the stewardship of the project. We've also been um, really grateful to receive some help from contributors, and that's going to help the project grow as well. But being the primary contributor, I would like to ensure that the project has a sustainable future. I believe it's genuinely useful and am eager to get early testers and feedback to help steer the direction of the project. In any case, the feature today was Fairly straightforward. Um, we have user model, which is what is used here when you log in. And you have a number of fields. And I added a new property today, which behaves like a field in Python. And it says user is care circle organizer. And what that checks is if this person has a companion, they've added a person. Uh, th this user has added a person to the people page here and that for this companion they're an organizer you see my name here I have a magic wand that means I'm organizing this care circle I have special privileges here like I can add other participants to these events whereas a normal participant could only volunteer themselves and remove themselves I can also join but that's the kind of normal workflow for uh, people they won't uh, who aren't coordinators they won't see this button here so in order to know who is the coordinator, we have this flag, this Boolean flag is organizer or coordinator. I'm working on the nomenclature here. We're going to um, simplify things and keep it consistent and probably alliterative. So basically, is the user a care circle organizer? Well, we're going to check if they've got any companions that they're a member of these companionship circles where they're an organizer. So if any of those exist, that's true. We'll just return that. I could probably just 
return it directly, but uh, in any case, a little bit verbose. Um, but it saves me a few lines of code. So where we use this? Well, there's a button here um, normally that lets you, when you first sign in, add a new person to the page here. And uh, that button is defined here on the personal list page. We do have multi-person support, so there's no reason you really can't add multiple people. In the long run, we might add that as a uh, subscriber feature. If you need to coordinate multiple people, well, you're probably a professional or some kind of organization. So there might be a subscription tier for that. Uh, we might be able to add a special exception and give um, everybody a default number of persons that they can coordinate. And on special cases, if you need to add two, like your mom and your dad who no longer live together, but uh, both need companionship. Well, we could probably make an exception for that, but also we're going to try to keep subscription costs really low and accessible and maybe even have, um, I don't know how to work, but free subscription. I don't want cost to be a barrier to this project, but I do want it to be sustainable. So there's that fine line I've got to walk. And uh, essentially to, there's this button here. So if I just toggle the logic here, you'll see that there's this button where I can add a person here. Now, when I click that button, it would take me to a form, which right now I'm getting a forbidden message because the view to create that form is also checking whether the user is a care circle member. So I'm just going to revert that, which will hide the button again. And essentially how we define that is on the create view. We're going to create a person. We add this user passes test mix in, which uh, this create view is operating in the person model and it will present to it'll generate a form with two fields, the name and the person's photo. And uh, I did some uh, overriding of the form to make sure that the name field is auto focused. And there's some validation here that when, when I create a, a new person, I will become the organizer. So the person who creates the user who creates the person becomes the organizer. That's how this works. Um, this test function is now used by this person create view to make sure that the um, it returns a true or false based on whatever logic I put in here. And I've described that for now users can create at most one um, person or caring circle, care circle. And we're, the limit is intended to reduce the likelihood of abuse while eventually encouraging users to become supporters when that tier becomes available. I'm planning on that tier uh, becoming available. I just want to be transparent about that. So I'm including that in the source code as well. So here we check whether users already a care circle organizer. If so, they can't add a new person or care circle. And that's as simple as uh, using the um, is care circle organizer. But here this test function should return true or false whether or not this um, view should render. So I'm uh, inverting the or negating the logic there. So Here's what the form looks like by default. So if they're not a care circle organizer, uh, they should be able to add the person. But since I'm already a care circle organizer, I get a forbidden error. People aren't going to accidentally stumble on this. So for now, this 403 message is, um, I think, fine. We do have a, a separate task for creating user-friendly error messages, which is part of our Hacktoberfest. For, uh, good first issues. If you're interested, it's issue number 76. And new contributors are welcome. I'm also available to um, help with any questions or concerns that you have about the task. In any case, the error message will be a bit friendlier and give you a way to recover if somehow you do find your way here. But there's not really any direct link to that ad form except right here. So somebody has to kind of know about that form. I'm just adding one extra layer of security so that uh, even, you know, just disabling this button is not enough. We actually have to make sure they can't submit the form and probably or actually add the view, which would in turn submit the form. It, the create view automatically uh, generates a form. <laughs> Django is doing a lot of magic here, but nonetheless, this is all Django internals, which are not quite relevant to the task at hand. Um, the code I wrote today was essentially that, that line here and more explanation than code. Okay. Well, that's been a recap of today's open source hangout. 
If you'd like to get involved with this project, you can stop by github.com slash companionship care. We're also working on another project periodically on this live uh, stream called CiviWiki. And if you'd like to get involved with CiviWiki, uh, stay tuned and we'll get you uh, set up as a developer or any type of con uh, contributor. Uh, everyone is welcome. And right now we're running a Hacktoberfest um, initiative. We're aligning with that and setting up several tasks that are good for new contributors uh, so that you can get your Hacktoberfest credits by contributing to these projects. Thanks a lot for your time. I hope you're doing all right out there. Have a good day.